Um, first of all, uh, Mr. Gill, let me say congratulations. Welcome to the Hall of Fame. Thank you very much. Uh, you're the only, only the fourth general manager, uh, Branch Rickey, Ed Barrow, George Weiss, uh, to be elected to the Hall of Fame, who mainly did his job as GM. Um, very rarefied error there. Um, put into per perspective what this means to you as a team builder. Uh, you know, what it is, it's a recognition of, of the people I believe that, that I've worked with. Uh, I could only uh, receive this honor, and it certainly is an honor to be elected to the Hall of Fame uh, if it hadn't been for the people that, that I work with, uh, you know, during my career. Uh, ownership, players, scouts, player development people. Uh, to me, they all share in this honor. Uh, uh, they're all a part of this, and uh, uh, this isn't a one-person operation. I couldn't have done it alone, and so consequently, uh, I feel very gratified and, and, and very thankful for them. You spent almost 50 years in pro baseball. Um, what does it mean to you to have come all the way up through the organization um, and, and in various roles throughout various organizations to reach this point? Well, you know, it's... Uh, you, you think about the Hall of Fame, and, and I've always uh, revered the Hall of Fame and, and, and what it stands for, and uh, never really had it in my mind that, that I would ever have any opportunity you know, to get, get in the Hall of Fame. Uh, I went to work at a job that I loved. Uh, never thought I was going to work any day, because I love going into the office. I love talking about players, working with the different scouts and player development people. So uh, this is just sort of, for me, it's sort of icing on the cake. I mean, for this to happen, it's just, uh, it's, it was, I was stunned, I was surprised, I was thrilled. There was a lot of uh, emotions that ran through me uh, when I got the notice today. Okay. Uh, you're the first general, your first general manager job uh, was in Toronto. Uh, you built that team from the bottom up. Your vision created 11 straight winning seasons for that team. Um, is that about as satisfying as it can be for a general manager, starting from square one and seeing that kind of success? I think so. Uh, you know, we had a very patient ownership in uh, in Toronto that, that gave us time to to build that team the the way it should be. We told them from the the onset it would be about ten years before we'd uh, you know be competitive. We end up uh, going to the playoffs. I think eight or nine years in, into the program, and so it was sort of like you, you were climbing a mountain, climbing a mountain, and all of a sudden you got to the top and you you took a deep breath and you kind of said, "Well, I made it. I got up here," and so. Uh, you know, from there we, we kind of took off, and uh, though we didn't win a World Series until 1992, I mean, uh, we went through a lot of trials and tribulations, uh, the 85, then we were in the playoffs in 91, and we couldn't get there, so, but I think uh, all those bumps along the road just make you appreciate uh, when you do win a World Series. During your career, you acquired a couple of uh, nicknames, including uh, Stan Pat, due to your patience, uh, and uh, Wooly Seagap for your uh, uh, ability to uh, for memorization and your, your, your great memory. Um, which of those two nicknames means the most to you and why? Well, really, I think Wally Seacap. Uh, uh, Earl Weaver gave me that name. Uh, and it's yellow pages backwards. Right. And, uh, you know, that kind of that means the most to me. I played for Earl for two years. Uh, and, uh, you know, we used to ride the buses together, and I used to do a lot of reading, and uh, so if somebody asks a question, uh, I used to have a lot of the answers, so uh, he started calling me Wally Seacap. Uh, the Stan Pat was um, that we didn't, you know, didn't make a transaction for a long period of time, and uh, I think the media was, uh, was looking uh, for us to make some moves, and I, I said, if there's a move that makes sense and one that makes our club better, uh, I'm certainly ready to do it, but right now, uh, I don't see that. Uh, I don't see that move out there. Okay, good. Uh, you left Toronto, uh, landed in Baltimore. You won there. You left Baltimore. You landed in Seattle. You won there. You left Seattle. You landed, landed in Philadelphia. You won there. Uh, was it satisfying for you to know that you could take what you were doing, and and create success over and over again? Um, I, I never. I, I never really thought of, about it. I, I just, uh, I, there were challenges, because uh, I had originally signed with the Orioles, and, and I always, uh, thinking back, uh, it was a great organization when I was there. Harry Dalton, uh, you know, was the, the general manager when I was there, farm director. 
And so I thought it was it was it was cool going back to Baltimore and, and trying to win because they hadn't they hadn't been in a World Series I think since '83, and so we got the playoffs a couple times. Uh, going going to Seattle, uh, it it was it was it was it was a lot of fun going out there. Uh, I hadn't uh, I hadn't been in the West, you know, for a number of years, and, and I thought again uh, they had a group that was a, that was a challenge, and and the same thing in Philadelphia. The difference, of course, is that. Uh, I built Toronto really from the ground up. We built that from the ground up. The other three places, we just put some pieces. We moved some pieces around, and, and hopefully got them in the right place and, and made them competitive. So they were two different types of building situations. One was a complete building from the ground up, and the others were a little bit of remodeling. Uh, when the ballot came out, your name was on it. Uh, what was your reaction just seeing your name on the Hall of Fame ballot? Uh, I was just I was just really honored I, I, to be on that ballot with uh, Billy and Marvin and George Steinbrenner and the other players that were on the ballot, uh, even to be considered, uh, you know, for the Hall of Fame. I thought, you know, was a great honor, and so uh, I, I was thrilled that, uh, that that at least I made it that far. You've talked a lot about, you mentioned it earlier, you mentioned it at your press conference, all the good people that you have that have worked uh, uh, for you and with you over the years. Um, one of the main jobs of general manager is to take a, a team of people, different personalities, different talents, and get them to all work together uh, in an organization. Uh, you were able to do that seemingly everywhere you went. What was your secret? Um, I think was uh, respect. I think I, not, not respect for myself, respect for the, for the employees that are, are, are in those positions. Uh, many times we hire people to do jobs and we don't let them do their jobs. We want to do their jobs for them. And so uh, I had respect for the people that had held those positions. And as I told someone, uh, this job, you've got to be a good listener and you can't listen when you're talking. And so uh, every place that I went, uh, the people I respected those people uh, that were in those positions, and I listened to what they had to say, and I evaluated, uh, you know, what their recommendations or their advice might be, or the evaluation of players, and we went on from there. And they, and I think they knew um, that I listened to them, that they they went back and said, well, I made a contribution. You know, he listened to me. He took in what I had to say. He might not have done exactly what I told him to do, but I know that he listened to me. So. Uh, I think being a good listener, people people want you to listen. People want to feel a part of it, and I hopefully that's what we did in uh, all the places that uh, I had an opportunity to work. You've been part of some great historic moments in, in, in baseball. Joe Carter's World Series winning uh, home run, Seattle's 116 win season, um, Cal Ripken's record breaking game, the Phillies' first World Championship in 28 years. What magical moment in all those great moments that you've been part of is the most magical for you? Uh, probably winning the World Series uh, the first time, and in, in, when that '85 would certainly be, as I say, we reached the top of the mountain. We finally got there. That that was a, a big part. But then winning the '92, '93 back-to-back -back World Series, uh, which hadn't been done, that was a big thrill for us. And uh, I, I think it really um, validated what we did in '92 by making some changes between 92 and 93, changed the players on the team and then coming back and winning 93. So uh, from that standpoint, uh, that, was, that was a big thrill, uh, winning back-to-back -back World Series. Okay. Uh, in Seattle, uh, you took a very good team and you reformed them into a great team and you talked about that remodeling job. How gratifying was it for you to, to take that, be able to take that team and make it that much better? Well, again, uh, Sometimes, sometimes it's, very, it's better to be lucky than good. <laughs> and to win 116 games, you got you got to be a little bit lucky. Let's face it; uh, they don't come down the road too much. I mean, everybody kind of thinks if you get to 100 wins, you know, that's kind of that's that's great. You got there, and we got to 116 and losing 46. It's that's hard to believe. Uh, but it was it was it was a great effort by our players. It was a great team effort, and. Uh, and everything just came together, and, and I have to give a lot of credit, you know, to to Lou Pinnell and the staff that we had there. Lou did a great job in 
in handling those people. And uh, it just was unfortunate that was that, that was the year of 9/11, uh, and and uh, we we got to the second round against the Yankees and got got, got knocked out. But uh, that was a wonderful, magical year. Before you went to Seattle, had you recognized the talent that team already had? Yeah, I, I, they they had they had really good talent. I thought. Uh, and it was just the fact of, of, as I say, bringing in a few players that, uh, that kind of fit. Johnny Ola, Johnny Olerud came in. Uh, we had a couple extra guys and Mark McLemore, Stan Javier, uh, made a deal and got Mike Cameron to play center field. And so things just kind of, you know, fell into place. But it, uh, they had a, they had a good core, a good nucleus of players, uh, you know, in place when I got there. Did you, did you go after John Olerud? You had him in Toronto. Yeah, we did. He was a free agent, and he had been with the Mets. And uh, John is from Seattle, and so consequently, it was kind of coming home for him. So we signed him as a free agent. Yeah, right. Yep. yep. Uh, last question. Your dad had a brief uh, minor league career. You had experiences in the College World Series uh, and in the minor leagues. Uh, in total, you've spent over 50 years in the game of baseball. Now, uh, forever on, you're going to be known as Hall of Famer Pat Gillick. Have you been able to get your head around that? How does that feel? I haven't got my head around it yet, but it, it, it feels great. And as I say, it's just, it's just something that I never could expect. And I'm just really uh, excited about it, uh, thankful about it, I, and that the fact that the, the committee would even consider me and, and, and then vote me in, uh, I can't tell you how thankful I am. Congratulations and welcome. Thank you very much.